Yeah, thank you so much, um, Jim, and thank you for everybody joining us in this late, uh, well, early Friday afternoon session right after um, lunch. But yeah, um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the curricula side of things instead of my typical brain research um, talks that I usually give at NASIS, um, shifting and leaning into um, some of the what I've been thinking about as I am learning and be trying to be a better cartography professor now that I've been doing this um, for two years. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the project management course that I developed, um, but also an, a more introduction course. But it's good to also have context, right? Um, I am a professor at UW-Madison. Um, it is, I am lucky to be at one of the oldest um, institution teaching cartography um, in the US, and we have a rich history going back to Arthur Robinson and finding of the cart lab. Um, and he's been credited with creating um, one of like the early cartography curricula in the US. Um, but as part of that, um, I am up, I'm coming in in a very established, thought out um, cartography curriculum already with a bunch of classes. Um, what you see here are the three cartography professors at Madison who are separate from our GIS professors, um, which we have four more. Um, and this only shows us the cartography proper classes that are also separate from our GIS offering um, within the department. But an interesting challenge for me as I came in was what can I contribute to a curriculum that was already built out pretty well, right? So um, I ended up, um, my contribution ended up being um, helping to teach our in, uh, intro cartography 370, which is our bread and butter, but also developing two new courses at a higher and lower end level, which I'll be talking about today, reflecting some of the, the interesting challenges and, and the fun stuff I, I've learned um, through that. Um, first, the low level, right? Um, I developed a, a Geography 175 course, um, Maps in Our Changing Society, which can sort of be thought out as a map reading or a map survey class. Um, my um, goal or attempt going in was to sort of create a critical cartography um, spatial thinking class, but disguise it as a general map reading slash um, cartographic survey. What do map makers do, um, right? So I sort of framed the class around this pillars of critical cartography. What are maps? Thinking about it, not just from a, a straightforward cartographic perspective, but thinking about the psychology of maps and the philosophy philosophy that goes into map, um, the powers um, of maps and how it's being used or have been used as a tool of oppression and why we map, right? Um, why do we lie in maps? How do we lie? What is certainty or what isn't certainty? Um, and those sort of um, facets of um, things that you, us as established cartographers think about, but this class is for freshmen arriving to campus for the first time, not really ever thinking about maps um, in any other regards than just uh, the stuff they see on their high school wall or their, their bedroom walls, right? Um, so another challenge of that was like, okay, how do I find a reading that touches on critical cartography, but um, doesn't go too deep into it? A lot of our critical cartography textbooks are real dense. Not, they're not really for a freshman audience. You would lose them real quick. Um, and what I ended up finding was this book, which is sort of a general reading um, book called Caplock, and coming from a more design science side of things, looking at the effect of capitalism on how we design everything from road signs to street signs to money to including maps, um, how maps have been used as a tool of engineering um, power structures and borders and limit. And this ended up being an excellent reading, a book that the kids actually enjoyed um, reading through the whole 200 page um, and thinking about all of these challenges and issues that they weren't really ever taught to think about in high school because high school geography education, right? Um, and then in the later half of, or the after week um, nine, um, the latter half of the class, I sort of entirely throw it over to you guys, um, you, you all, um, the NASIS um, community, but also my peers. I invite um, a whole bunch of, basically anyone that is interested in talking to freshmen, bright-eyed um, students, learning about how cool, amazing maps are for the first time. So I invite people from a, a wide breadth of sectors, um, from tech, from uh, media, from journalism, from diplomacy, government, all of that. And um, they are asked to tell them, tell the kids what they do with maps, how did they end up being a cartographer, um, what was their journey, and the kids get to um, interact and Zoom and just ask questions directly so that they're not just hearing um, the, the tired um, old stories that I have bringing in, um, but also directly from um, amazing uh, 
uh, cartographers that are still doing that, still in industry, um, still rocking it and making amazing maps, and, and as well, how did they find that journey in the process? And I consider this class to be rather a success for a class that I just sort of dreamt up um, semi-randomly. Um, we had a 40% um, continuing rate, so the freshmen that took um, 175 with me, 40% of them continue on to my intro cartography 370. Um, and it serves sort of almost as a pipeline into our cartography program, not waiting until they flunk out of engineering in their junior year to find geography, but getting them early, right? Um, which is a huge benefit for our program um, and what we're trying to do. So um, I'm going to go over like what works for the other class, but for this class, is essentially everything more or less worked out great, which was like, oh. How is that possible? Uh, designing a class for the first time and everything just went perfectly as I imagined it and you'll hear quickly how the other class didn't go as well as this one. Um, but it also served to plant um, the seed for cartographic interest, right? I'm happy that like I, I now see kids that took my class last year um, and they're like volunteering in the cart lab. We started hiring a few of them. They're continuing on and some of them um, are cartography majors and I'm teaching um, the second iteration or the second time I'm teaching it. Um, right now and it's it's just like so exciting to see freshmen actually um, be nerdy and, and interesting about interested about maps um, the way I was because I was one of those weird kids that just knew I wanted to be a cartographer or a geographer from day one. Okay, but shifting to my other course, which is um, my 570. Um, I, I named it Cartographic Production and Project Management. Um, so this course, the idea of it was to sort of combine together together a bunch of my experiences at um, UO in the infographics lab making amazing atlases, um, this full breadth um, production skill along with my um, more than two years uh, working for Apple. Um, so sort of trying to link the industry and trying to translate that process um, for, in, for an academic audience, right? Because one of the things that I was realizing that um, a lot, when our kids go out there into the real world, once you get a job, um, you sort of have to learn rather quickly of how to actually manage a project and balance a lot of things that aren't just making maps, right? You're not just making one map in a volume. So I wanted to recreate that environment and bring in some of those collaborative, but also project management um, perspective and requirement um, and channeled it into a project that they did together. Um, the project for last semester, uh, last time I taught it, which was um, this past spring, was sort of this re-envisioned Atlas of Wisconsin, where each student were in charge of their own topic and they had to lead and pitch it. Um, and also I even like tried, it was a little um, cheesy, but I tried to, to mock up the class as if we were like a startup environment or like a, an actual production environment, um, telling them there were team members, not necessarily students, and that I was like their manager. I designed it or tried to design it um, along this project timeline that is based on, on um, theories within project management. And I really challenged them to lean in on the tech aspect, right? Um, they're using a bunch of tools because they will have to use a bunch of tools um, to learn this. Um, you're not using Arc Pro only. You, you rarely do you only use one program, right? You got to use, know how to use it all together and produce amazing maps. And also lean into the project, project management tech. Um, if we want to keep a track of something as complicated as this, you sort of need um, to be able to uh, manage it properly, efficiently, and project management Pro project management helps us do that. Another interesting aspect was I wanted to um, be a true team, right? I wanted people to A, be in charge of their own topic, but also B, have to help out other people. So everybody was given their own topic, but they nominally, they were also um, working under somebody else to help um, their peer actualize their project, just like in the real world, right? Uh, when I had a project um, at Apple, I had I was a lead of certain ones, but then I was also helping other people, whether it's country reviews um, and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of it worked, and I'll, I'll talk about some of the things that work, right? A, the thing that worked, cartographic excellence. Um, I challenged them to figure out the cartographic production pipeline that we use, and this is basically the pipeline that I learned from infographics. Um, they had to figure out, okay, how do you start from raw data and get all the way to layout design um, within InDesign and rather quickly. And they produced an amazing map. We ended up with an atlas um, that was 50-ish page long. 
Um, everybody had a page pair. There was front cover, um, back cover. Uh, most of these kids were using um, InDesign for the first time, learning how to make a template or how to like save a style um, and be able to uh, maintain it. Um, something else that I thought worked was the project management theory because I kept hearing again and again that this was something that our students are already interested in. And they were taking classes in business school and elsewhere, um, but we weren't really offering it. And really, they just wanted something that, that they didn't need to know the in and outs of project management, right? They just need to know the basics of it so that they were ready um, for the real world where they are expected to at least have a basic understanding of it. Um, and of course, I used um, this thing called Microsoft Loop um, in order to track all of our tasks and um, maintain, okay, I'll speed up. Um, yeah, I still have a bit to go. Okay, speeding up. Um, maintain a bunch of our tasks, right? This is basically like, uh, if you ever use Quip or Google Docs, it's like that on steroid, but also combined with task management. So I was able to track everything. Everybody shared the same notebook, um, and they could like complete tasks and assign it to the other people and all of that. So we, we didn't lose any of that um, in the process. So there wasn't this mismanagement of all the things that needed to be done in order for all of this to come together. Um, of course, there's a lot of things that didn't work. Um, some of the things that didn't work was um, there was a high level of technological skill variance, right? I had amazing grad students, such as Maggie, who is here with me, um, did amazingly. They already knew the process. They've made professional maps before. But I also had seniors in undergrad um, that hadn't made a map in a year, and trying to like get that up and running, um, getting everybody on the same page was definitely a challenge. And of course, Chromebooks, which I did not realize I was going to do this, uh, real, uh, face this. A lot of kids now use Chromebook. And, and as part of this class, I wanted people to just work from their own computer and bring in their own computer. But what do you do when you can't run any of the software to make those maps, right? So the timeline definitely shifted. We ended up spending way too much time um, focusing on um, getting everybody up to speed. And of course, the multi-team structure doesn't always work, right? Um, owing to the reality of students taking a bunch of class, like it wasn't really reasonable for me to expect the kids to sort of manage themselves and each other thinking about the projects all the time while they have four other classes asking them to do a bunch of other things. So I quickly realized that, okay, that's being cut out. I'm not gonna be able to manage that. That's sort of a bad idea. Um, and of course, like I can force kids to use the task management and I can go in and update the tasks and like keep a track of everything um, coming together, but they weren't really incentivized to do it themselves, right, because I was doing it. Um, because again, at the end of the day, it's a class. Um, so even if I modeled it after um, some sort of structure, it was still um, a thing. But essentially, I think a lot of people, or my students, Maggie can test after, um, that they learned a lot. But I also learned a lot myself, right? I, I was trying to figure out how to translate this process that I learned through industry and production into um, an academic setting. And, and I think I had a good start. And I'm currently in the process of redesigning and updating this course to teach it again this upcoming spring. Um, but at the end of the day, we had an amazing projects, and I had, um, and the students learned a lot, and I learned a lot along with them. OK, I'll conclude. Sorry. No, you're, you're fine. OK. Yeah, I was like, I thought I had five more minutes, Jim. You said you held up the one minute sign. Yeah. <laughs> I was so excited about your talk. Right? OK. Well, I guess we have lots of time for questions then. <laughs> but yeah, no worries, no worries. Apologies if I spoke too fast, but yeah. Students from geography, mm -hmm. or geography interest. Yeah. And, and as far as I saw in the assignments, you don't do any mapping in that class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how does it work? How does it work? That's, that's a great question. OK, so um, yes, for the intro level course, these are, um, so what happens is the students go to orientation, and they are funneled through this 
um, thematic groups of classes. So mine is sort of in the environment, political. If people, if the kids say that they're interested in our environment or interested in a little bit of like psychology of design or interested in political science or in international studies, they end up in potentially in my class. Um, but we don't make any maps actually. The only maps we make is during um, when Mamata from felt like zooms in and we do a collaborative activity where they get to like draw on the map of Madison and highlight their experiences. Um, but for the most part, um, we have reflections. Uh, we do in-class activities. We talk about, okay, like what is the ethics of like smartphone locational data tracking? Um, we talk through, okay, what is the hidden power behind a map? What are the intent of the, the cartographer of the map maker? Sort of um, get them to think and decode a map beyond just the pretty graphics on the wall. So this is a wholly um, sort of a weird GIS cartography class, right, where they don't actually do cartography. They look at so many maps and they get to figure out all the facets so that when we go on to their next class, their 370, um, where they do learn about um, ArcGIS and how to make cartography, they're not just drawing lines. They understand that these lines can have real implication for a lot of people um, in the future if they continue doing this.